Number 10. Umm El Faroud Wreck Built in England in 1969, the Umm El Faroud was an oil tanker that carried fuel between Italy and Libya. Its seafaring career came to a swift end on the night of February 3, 1995. While docked in Malta, one of the ship's tanks exploded, killing nine shipyard workers. The 377-foot-long vessel was so badly damaged from the incident that the inspectors chose to write it off as a total loss. For the next three years, the Umm El Faroud remained docked in the harbor off the Maltese capital of Valletta. Finally, in 1998, it was decided that the defunct ship would be best put to use as an artificial reef for marine life. She was towed out to sea and scuttled in the waters off the village of Wied il Krendi. The site became popular among divers and remains so today, even after a storm ripped the vessel in two during the winter of 2005-2006. Number 9. Pink Pygmy Pipe Horse When divers first came across a small pink creature in the waters off New Zealand in 2011, they believed that they had encountered a rare but known seahorse. But when a photo of the distinctively hued animal appeared on social media in 2017, it caught the eye of a biodiversity scientist from California named Graham Short, who suspected that it was a new species. He teamed up with Dr. Thomas Trinsky from the Auckland Museum to identify the tiny 2.4-inch long marine creature. They determined that it represented a new genus and species of pipe horse, which are closely related to seahorses. It's the first new pipe horse genus to be discovered in New Zealand in 100 years. In what's believed to be the first time an indigenous group named a new species, the scientists worked with a local Maori tribe to give the animal its formal name, Silix tupario manaya. The genus name Silix is derived from the Greek and Latin term for cup or chalice and was chosen because of the cup-like crest on the creature's head. The term tupario manaya means the garland of the manaya. It's a combination of the Maori word for seahorse, manaya, and tupuna, which means ancestor. Speaking with the press about the species' indigenous-inspired name, Dr. Trinsky said, it is overdue recognition of traditional knowledge that can contribute to the discovery of new species. A tiny pink seahorse and recognition and respect for the Maori people? This discovery is a win-win. Number 8. Long Missing Wedding Ring During a recent brutal heat wave, an Australian teenager named Georgia Morris decided to go snorkeling for some relief from the stifling weather. She was having such a nice time cooling off, she decided to stay in the water even after the rest of her group headed for dry land. While exploring the waters off Redgate Beach a few miles south of Perth, the 14-year-old encountered a pair of rocks with what appeared to be a pocket of sand between them. At first, she swam away, but she felt as if the current was pulling her back toward the rocks. It was there that Georgia found a wedding band half buried on the seabed, which she initially wrote off as a piece of rubbish. But she took a few extra seconds to examine the object up close and realized that it might be of immense sentimental value to someone. Luckily, there was an inscription and a date on the ring, which made it possible to find the owner. Georgia and her mother posted a photo of the jewelry to a community Facebook page, and it wasn't long before it captured the attention of Mark Dittmar. He had lost a ring 18 years earlier in the exact location where Georgia found it. Dittmar and his wife Karen confirmed that the ring was theirs by providing the date of the inscription, which Georgia and her mother had left out of the post as a way to test the truthfulness of anyone who came forward. Karen told local papers that she was pregnant with the couple's son, who is now 19 years old, when Mark lost his ring trying to catch a fish with his bare hands. The Dittmars tried to find the wedding band, but ultimately resolved to just buy another ring, which he also lost. Thankfully, his wife had a sense of humor about his forgetful tendencies, and both she and Mark were grateful that Georgia had found the long-missing jewelry. And even after spending nearly two decades in the ocean, it was in near-perfect condition. Number 7. The Lost Temple of Hercules Gaditanus Earlier this year, archaeologists near Cadiz, Spain announced that they may have discovered an ancient pilgrimage site called the Temple of Hercules Gaditanus. Famous historical figures such as Julius Caesar and Hannibal reportedly visited the site, which dates back to the 8th century BC and is being hailed as a holy grail of artifacts. The temple is submerged in a small channel called the Cañao de Sancti Petri. Archaeology graduate student Ricardo Bellizzone was the first to detect the site while examining images that were taken using remote sensing technology called LIDAR, which enables experts to see hidden and buried objects. He noticed a 1,000-foot-long, 500-foot-wide structure near the shore which matched the description of the lost temple. The team has been unable to excavate the underwater ruins because of the marshy environment's shifting water levels, but they're making plans to do so. These challenging conditions fall in line with the historical description of the temple, which may have been built by the Phoenicians. 
Ancient texts about Hannibal's and Julius Caesar's visits describe the site as a changing environment in contact with the sea, subject to the changing tides. Not all experts believe that the structure is the mythical temple of Hercules. Archaeology professor Antonio Monterrosa Checa, who authored a study in 2020 claiming that the temple is in another location, stands by his findings and attributes the new research to a triangulation error with no reality at all. For now, the claims in both studies remain unproven. Number 6. The World's Largest Fish Breeding Ground Antarctica is a place that we think of as being largely devoid of life. Yet this is where scientists recently discovered the world's largest fish breeding ground. Researchers from the Alfred Wagner Institute in Germany have been exploring the Weddell Sea since the early 1980s, but until this year they had only seen small clusters of nests. While performing routine observations using an underwater camera, they unintentionally encountered a 92-square-mile breeding ground filled with 60 million icefish nests. Each nest contains as many as 2,500 eggs. The breeding ground is in a part of the sea that's known to experience upwelling, which is when cold water rises to the surface while warmer waters stay near the sea floor. In addition to icefish, Weddell seals are also commonly found in this area and may be dining on the fish. Scientists are unsure whether the upwelling plays a role in attracting the icefish or seals to the region, or if it's just a coincidence. They're citing the discovery of the breeding ground as an example of why Antarctic waters are in dire need of protection from human activity. There's a proposed policy to create a marine protected area in the Weddell Sea that would restrict fishing and invasive research, but it has yet to be passed by the Southern Ocean Conservation Body. The Council of Nations that make up this organization have been squabbling for years over conservation measures, but are still struggling to come to an agreement. Without protection, one of the last remaining places on Earth that remains largely untouched by people will remain at risk of being destroyed by us. What do you think? Should this area be protected or should fishing and research be allowed without restrictions? Tell us in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel while you do. Number 5. Ancient Ships Full of Wine In mid-2021, scientists announced the discovery of an ancient Roman ship off the Palermo Sicily coast in the Mediterranean Sea. Dating back to the 2nd century BC, the vessel sits over 300 feet beneath the waves near the town of Isola della Femenina, which sits along the island's northwestern shore. Using a submarine robot, the team noticed that the ship was carrying a huge load of wine jars, or amphorae. The discovery came just weeks after another group of researchers found another ancient wreck off the island of Ustica, which is located north of Sicily. It rests at a depth of around 230 feet and was also found to contain a copious amount of wine. These are just two of many Roman shipwrecks that have been discovered throughout the Mediterranean. In recent years, the Italian authorities have stepped up their fight against the black market, which recovers hundreds of stolen amphorae from people's homes every year. It's important to prevent valuable artifacts from falling into shady hands in the first place whenever possible, because moving an object from where it was found takes away the opportunity for experts to study it in its proper context. By investigating the newly discovered wrecks and their cargo firsthand, researchers can learn more about ancient trade in the Mediterranean, where the Romans exchanged wine, olives, and other products with merchants in North Africa, Spain, France, and the Middle East. Number 4. Magical Microbes Oxygen is essential to nearly all life forms on Earth, and until very recently it was our understanding that sunlight is needed to produce oxygen. But scientists have discovered deep-dwelling microbes that can survive in dark environments where sunlight is absent by making their own oxygen. Known as ammonia-oxidizing archaea, these microbes are commonly found throughout the world's oceans at all depths, and they undergo a biological process that has never been seen in any other organism. Researchers discovered this while trying to figure out how they survive as long as they do in a nearly oxygen-free environment. It was especially puzzling because, as microbiologist Beata Kraft pointed out, the microbes play an important role in the nitrogen cycle, which requires oxygen. The team observed the microscopic organisms in a lab and found that when they move from oxygen-rich to oxygen-depleted waters, they produce oxygen to create nitrite, with nitrogen gas as a byproduct. Within minutes of using up all the oxygen in their environment, oxygen levels started to increase again, according to geobiologist Don Canfield. While scientists are now aware of this mysterious biological process, they still don't know exactly how it works. It appears as though the microbes only produce enough oxygen for their own survival, but it's still a landmark discovery in a world where producing oxygen without sunlight is extremely rare. Could there be other uses for this kind of discovery in the future? Tell us your theories in the comments down below. Number 3. An Extinct Fish The long head darter is a small fish that reaches 4.5 to 5 inches long. 
Scientists don't know much about this uncommon species, which is considered threatened throughout the entirety of its range. According to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the fish's need for clear water and gravel and boulder bottoms restricts it to a limited number of environments and may contribute to its low numbers. There are populations in New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and now Ohio. Until recently, the longhead darter was thought to be extirpated or locally extinct in the state. In early January, the Ohio Division of Wildlife announced that fish management crews had captured two specimens during a bass survey in the Ohio River. They were the first longhead darters to be caught since 1939, over 80 years ago. While the rediscovery of the species in Ohio is good news, it doesn't take away from the fact that the longhead darter is threatened. It's important for wildlife agencies to continue assessing and monitoring populations so that they can take any conservation measures necessary. Number 2. Crusader Sword while exploring the waters off Israel's Carmel coast last year, an amateur scuba diver named Shlomi Katzen discovered a collection of ancient artifacts, including anchors, pottery fragments, and a 900-year-old sword that may have belonged to a crusader knight. Archaeologists with the Israel Antiquities Authority described the nearly three-foot-long iron blade as a beautiful and rare find. It was used sometime during the Crusader period, which lasted from 1095 to 1291. The anchors that Katzen discovered date back 4,000 years to the Late Bronze Age. These fascinating finds mark the latest of several recent discoveries of ancient artifacts in the region, which has natural coves that function as a refuge for merchant ships during storms. Many of these vessels left behind historically valuable items that are just now being found, thanks to waves and shifting undercurrents moving the sand along the seafloor. The Israel Antiquities Authority Marine Archaeology Unit Director Kobe Sharvet told National Public Radio that even small storms can shift sands, revealing certain parts of the seabed while burying others. Ancient objects are also surfacing more often because leisure diving is on the rise. Sharvet emphasized the importance of leaving any discoveries in place and reporting them to authorities so that they can be documented properly. Katzen received a Certificate of Appreciation of Good Citizenship for alerting the Israel Antiquities Authority to the sword, which will go on public display after it's been cleaned and restored. Number 1. Strip Club In 2013, a marine biologist named Gil Koplovitz published photos he took of a forgotten underwater club that he discovered while researching off the Israeli coast. Located in Eilat, the venue was originally a submerged restaurant called the Red Sea Star that was later repurposed as an erotic dancing establishment in other words, a strip club, called Nifa's Show Bar. The building's entrance is above water. It took visitors across a 230-foot bridge and down a flight of stairs. Speaking with the Huffington Post, Koplovitz said he was unsure when the business shuttered its doors. He snapped photos of the interior through the rusting venue's glass windows, showing a stripper pole that functioned as a centerpiece and was once surrounded by tables and chairs that had since been removed. Curiously, there's not much information on the internet about the shuttered strip club other than the details Koplovitz offered after conducting his own investigation into the establishment. But it's probably fair to assume that it was the only underwater strip club to ever exist. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.